Welcome back everybody, Bronson with the Epoxy Resin Store. And today I've got a really good video. It's very informative on how to install a vapor barrier correctly for metallic and epoxy floors. All right, everybody, here we are at the Boulder City Municipal Airport. We've got a client of ours. He's a Southwest Airlines captain. On the side, he also has a couple little jets of his own that he flies in, and we're gonna give him a sexy hangar floor. So the first step in doing that is we've got to put down a vapor barrier. So vapor barriers are important. They prevent gas from coming through the concrete and moisture as well. Um, so the reason we do vapor barriers is so that the gas and moisture doesn't pass through the concrete. People don't realize concrete's very porous. Um, so we put this uh, vapor barrier down. It holds back, it's like 20 pounds per square inch. It's, it holds back really, really well. It'll hold the pressure back, the gas is back, and the moisture back. Um, one of the reasons we do that, if you don't do that, I've seen floors before where the floor's been poured out, and then as it's curing, the gas, there's gas is coming through the earth, through the concrete, will cause bubbling in the, in the epoxy or polished spark, depending on what kind of floor you're putting down. And then as it cures and hardens, the bubble has a really, really hard time releasing. Then you get this bubble that's just stuck there. Then it dries that way and you come across and then you've got pock holes everywhere and it just looks really, really bad. You'll look bad for your clients and you'll end up having to redo that floor. It's gonna cost you money. We've all done it. You're gonna do it at some point, but the way to avoid it is to use a good vapor barrier like we're doing here. So right now this hangar, it's real windy and dusty out at these airports. So we've got our blower here. We're just gonna blow this out really, really well. Um, make sure we don't have, uh, you know, get as much dust out of there as we can. Next thing we do is we're gonna come through and we're gonna fill the cracks, divots, and holes, anything like that. Our favorite thing, as you see, is we like to use body filler. Um, you can, you know, you can get this really cheap. Find your local collision uh, repair supply place. Um, the people who sell to the people who do your body uh, work on your cars and I, I buy a gallon of it for like 25 bucks. It's 50 bucks at the big box stores otherwise, and it works really well. The reason we like it is we're able to get on it and fill our cracks and then have it cure up in 20, 30 minutes, and then we're able to progress on with our floor. There's some good epoxy products on the market. They're stronger. They have a bunch of other uh, properties to them, but you gotta put them down, come back the next day, and then and it takes a whole extra day to do your job. Uh, for time is money, and we like to stay on it. So as you can see, the technique I like to use, I'm only trying to fill the hole. So you're gonna see me press down with the Bondo spreader, and, um, and then I'll come across the top and try to take as much off. We don't wanna leave a bunch on the surface that we have to sand off later. Um, you're just creating more work for yourself. So if you just are a little um, cognizant of what you're doing, as I'm pressing down this fresh body filler, it fills the crack, and then I don't have to worry about um, a ton of sanding later. All right, so now that the Bondo's dry, we just come through with a 40 or 60 grit on our sander here, and we're gonna give it a, a nice uh, sand to make sure it's nice and level. We don't have any high spots that are gonna interfere with our install. Next thing I'm gonna do is the vapor barrier that we use, it, it does 500 square feet per kit. So I'm gonna segment out this floor. I'm gonna use this tape here to mark out my sections, and then I will pour my kits in section. The vapor barrier is really, really good stuff. Um, you don't want to pour out more than you can spread out quickly um, at once. I've got three guys doing this, so we're, you'll see the technique that we use. If it's just you or you've got a, um, you're not going to be able to get on it real quick, um, make sure you just mix up smaller quantities. Like you can do half the batch, spread it out, and, and then get it on your own. Um, this stuff, it, it's strong. So once it starts to set up, and it does set up fairly quickly, um, it, it becomes more difficult to work with. So just don't, don't bite off more than you can chew. It's better to do a little at a time, get it spread nice and evenly than to try and do it all at once and get yourself into trouble. Um, I found the key with a lot of this stuff is just to have the patience to allow the process to work without rushing it and you just get good results. It seems like every time I rush, I end up having to redo something. So here I am marking it out my sections. Um, that will we'll pour it out so that I can know how much I gotta put and the area that I'm working to have a nice coverage in it. This, this, um, this hangar was a little over 2,400 square feet, so roughly 2,500 square feet. It's easy math, five kits, 500 square foot per kit. We're gonna have real nice coverage. Here we are unloading our product. We get it from the epoxy resin store as usual. 
and uh, bust this open and get it going. There's the product right there. It's a two part A, one part B, so it's a two to one ratio. Um, I mix the entire kit up at once. We just use a, a drill just like this. We're gonna take these, these bottles here, we're gonna dump them all into that five gallon bucket right there, and then we're gonna give it a nice mix for approximately a minute, minute and a half, make sure everything's uh, mixed real well. All right, so technique I like to use, I like to just take the bucket, take my knife, poke a couple holes in the bottom just like that. It's gonna drain out nice and quick and just makes my life easier and waiting for it to glug, glug, glug its way out. All right, now I've got all this five gallon bucket. I'm gonna mix it up really, really well with this mixer. Remember when mixing, hit your sides, get your bottom and make sure your materials are thoroughly uh, mixed together. Uh, try not to incorporate a bunch of air into your mix and you'll be good. Mix for approximately a minute, minute and a half. Now that I've got my material mixed out, I'm in my sections, I'm gonna pour it in lines. They're gonna be parallel with each other and then I'm gonna take a squeegee. So I'm gonna pour out all the material on the floor first. And I'm gonna take a squeegee and I'm gonna follow that. And I'm gonna spread that as, as uh, thinly as I can to get as much of the material out with the squeegee. Helps disperse it. And you're gonna see my guys come along. We've got 18 inch rollers are gonna cross roll. Every time they go through, they're picking up some material and they're spreading out uh, a nice even surface on that. So after you, you're, that's actually a gauge rake. You've got, it leaves a little bit of material behind. And as you can see, they're crossing there and uh, getting a nice uh, coverage on it. So we're gonna roll one way. And once it's all the way rolled out, we're gonna come and we're gonna cross roll the other way so that we have nice even coverage. And it's really, really beautiful. All right, as you can see, we're going, um, going over our, our sections. And every time we roll back through where the squeegee was, we're re-wetting the cover on the roller there as well so that we have a nice even uh, surface there. You can also get this uh, vapor barrier tinted. I recommend if you're gonna tint it to tint it to black, it creates a nice canvas for you to work with. We're using uh, a polyaspartic on this floor and we're gonna have a lot of pigment load in it so we're not overly concerned about uh, ghosting through onto the bottom because we've got so much material on this. Um, but if you're using a, a lighter color or more of just a solid color, you can tend to see through patterns and stuff like that, especially where we bond out in this, you can see it's blue. Um, so if you've got something like that, I would recommend just getting your vapor barrier uh, tinted previously. So when you do your next layer on it, it's, or your next, uh, your color coat on it, it's nice and you have a nice palette. You're not gonna have any ghosting through from the floor below. So you can see now that it's rolled, we're, uh, we're cross rolling as well. You see Mark's going one way and then Jordan's going the other direction. That's our cross roll. We'll make sure we hit this whole area and then we'll move on to the next section. All right, we've got the first section set up. Now we're gonna mix up our other section. As a reminder, we're gonna pour it out with, uh, we're gonna pour the entire contents of the bucket out in parallel lines with each other. Then we'll spread it out with the squeegee and then we'll roll it with an 18 inch roller and then we'll cross roll it in the sections we're working with so that we have a nice even coverage. So when I'm going section to section, you see I'm on my new section right here. Uh, that final line, I kind of try and make a little bit close to the previous section we just got off of. So when we cross roll into it, then we've got a little material to work with. We'll actually roll over the section we're into to the previously done. So we've got a cons consistent spread on it. Um, something I see people, particularly new people, are starting to, they, they try and go right up to the section, like they're stopping on this line, and you'll create a line. So just go over, pass, it's okay to overlap, and you'll have a nice clean uh, coverage. If you want a, ch a cheap and easy way to do a polished concrete, when you polish concrete, it's like sandy. You've got to just go over it and over and over again with a grinding machine, getting increasingly finer grits. Uh, a quick and dirty way to do it is you could just do a nice grind once on your floor, clean it up really, really well. Then you could take a vapor barrier like this and then just do the same process and spread it out and then you don't coat it. You just, you, and you're just gonna cross roll it so it's got a nice uh, level surface just like that, nice even coat distribution. Let it dry, this stuff dries really, really hard and it's gonna give you that polished concrete look and it'll stay like that, it's durable. You can mop it, do all that kind of stuff. So if you want a, a little, little cheater way to do a quick and dirty polished concrete, this works great. There's the finished product. You can see we've got a nice even coat across the floor. Um, looks really nice. Thanks for watching our video on how to install a vapor barrier. Remember, we don't ask for money on this channel, but we do ask for three things. We ask you to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and ring that bell so next time we've got a video, you're the first to find out.